My name is Professor Jennifer Rea, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Roman Fortuna and American exceptionalism in TV Supernatural. Supernatural is an American fantasy horror Western television show that aired on the CW. It tells the story of two brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester, who drive around the United States fighting and often killing a diverse group of supernatural beings from a variety of world religions, including Greco-Roman myth. Although the show adopts a Monster of the Week format, its central themes occupy the long-term story arc and include defending American exceptionalism, fighting demons, vampires, and pagan gods, and eliminating threats to the American way of life. As the series progresses, the audience learns that Sam and Dean are also prevent also attempting to prevent an apocalypse. And by the series end, they are fighting the Christian God who was taken on the form of a human named Chuck Shirley. For Chuck, the Winchesters are characters in a story he is writing. He can control what happens to them and put them into situations for his own entertainment. Throughout the show, the Winchester brothers are on a mission to defend their homeland safety. Scholars Joseph Engstrom and Erica Valenzano have put the Winchester's mission into a context where they argue that in Supernatural, the viewer is exposed to two core cultural myths which are popular in American media. The first is the myth of American exceptionalism, which they argue claims the superiority of the American experience and design. In other words, a country and culture chosen by God to literally and metaphorically serve as the world's protectors against evil. And the second is the frontier myth, which glorifies westward, westward American expansion. When the Winchester brothers drive west down America's highways, making stops at small towns to blast away the demons while dispensing justice, their behavior combines elements of both the frontier myth and the myth of American exceptionalism. Today, I am going to talk about the appearance of the Roman goddess Fortuna in the show. Her appearance intersects with the show's exploration of the myth of American exceptionalism and the frontier myth and leads to the questions, are the threats to what Sam and Dean would call the American way of life coming from outside of monotheistic religion or from within it? And is the American dream a realistic and sustainable one? But first, I'd like to give you some background information on the show and the brothers' mission. Who are the Winchesters? The brothers are from a blue collar Kansas family and their dad was also a demon hunter. The creator of the series, Eric Kripke, has this to say about his vision for Supernatural. I always love the idea that you have this very epic highfalutin prophecy about chosen ones and end times. And then you have this blue collar guy who's American and stubborn and cocky walk up to it and say, prophecy is for wussies. Kripke also states that the show depends on a pro-American American exceptionalism stance. Within the first five seasons, the theme emerges that the brothers are protecting Americans' Christian values and faith when they demon hunt, and the audience learns that the brothers are the divinely appointed protectors of the world. When they travel around the United States in their Chevy Impala, they surveil the frontier, and that surveillance is required in order to vanquish the beasts and evil that everyday Americans do not know about. The American brothers the values fight for are upholding justice and dispensing, dispensing righteous violence. Unlike many heroes on the CW network, the Winchesters do not possess any special superpowers. According to Jason Dittmer, who researches the post 9-11 narrative of American exceptionalism in modern popular media, if you are not a superhero with special powers, you need skills like Tony Stark. Sam and Dean demonstrate their skill at fixing things like their Chevy Impala, when they need, which they need for their life on the road and the EMF readers that they need to detect supernatural beings. But Dittmer also talks about the rules for the hero narrative that experiences a boost in popularity post 9-11, and I believe it applies here to Supernatural. He defines it as follows. The helpless community is saved from oppression by an itinerant hero who will not integrate into the community that he helps. Jillian Canode defines the American dream as an amalgamation of powerful images indicative of success and happiness. We are led to believe we need certain material objects to make us happy. We must work harder and harder to keep up with all the things we need and want to signal that we have made it to others. Now, Sam and Dean do not necessarily want a lot of material assets, but neither do they want to work for anyone else. And Sam in particular would like family, stability, and perhaps even a regular job. At the start of the series, Sam has a girlfriend. He was expecting to graduate from college, go to law school, and lead a normal life. He seems on track to have all of this. What does Dean convince him to do instead? live a life where he is not the mercy of corporate America and he does not work for anyone else. Although by seasons four and five, the brothers discover that they are in fact working for the angels. 
The brothers, however, do not work to survive or make a living wage. But there is a sense of upward mobility in the show. If the brothers can ever finish their mission, then they won't need to work for the angels. And Dean can eat all the diner food, drink his cold beers, and drive on the open road all he wants, and it won't be because he's working. But that is exactly what he does while he is on the job on the show, demon hunting. In the episode, It's a Terrible Life, the audience gets to see firsthand the American dream that Sam and Dean can never live until they finish hunting demons. In this episode, they both have traditional jobs at the same place, a company called Sandover Bridge and Iron. Dean is now Dean Smith, a salad eating, fancy car driving, NPR listening, portfolio owning executive. And Sam is Sam Weston, a bored tech support employee where every day is the same as the next. While the brothers do not know one another in this episode, they are drawn together by a series of mysterious deaths. Sam feels certain that he knows Dean and he has dreams in which he is hunting that Dean appears in, but when he tells Dean, Dean brushes him off. While working together to figure out why workers are committing suicide at the company, Sam and Dean battle a ghost they encounter. Although Dean admits to Sam, he has no idea how he knew how to defeat the ghost. Sam tells Dean it feels as if they have fought ghosts before, and that he feels as if he doesn't belong at the company. Sam then tells Dean they should be hunting ghosts together. Dean replies that it would never work. How would they support themselves? By living day to day off of fraudulent credit cards and eating unhealthy food at diners and without health insurance? Which is of course what the brothers do in almost all the other episodes. Sam persists and tells Dean, this isn't who I'm supposed to be. Dean insists he is exactly where he's supposed to be. Sam replies that he has a gut feeling that both he and Dean are supposed to be something else, but Dean brushes him off again. By the end of the episode, Sam quits his job and we see Dean get offered a shot at being the company's VP if only he will work seven days a week for the next eight to 10 years. Dean declines and gives his notice and says in an echo of Sam's words to him, this is not where I'm supposed to be. As soon as he does this, he is transformed back into Dean Winchester. An angel named Zachariah tells him that he did this to Dean to prove to him that the path he is on is truly in his blood and that he is a hunter, that he loves being a hunter, and that he would be miserable if he was not out demon hunting. Zachariah points out to Dean that he gets to save the world and drive a classic car. He has everything he ever wanted, even while demon hunting. Sam does not get a similar scene, perhaps because he does want that nine to five life just not the particular one he has in this episode where you answer calls at an IT help desk. I wanna turn now to a discussion of Fortuna in ancient Rome. Fortuna in ancient Rome could be a literary construction, a personification, a deified abstraction, a divine quality, or an imperial benefit. And depending on the context in which you encountered Fortuna, you can see how individuals in antiquity constructed various ideas about her. The attributes of Roman Fortuna that relate to supernatural are as follows. People from all different social strata would venerate the god who could change their luck. She could be fickle. Maybe she would help you and maybe not. And as for Fortuna, she was a rural goddess who would help the plebs. In particular, Fortuna could protect both the people from outside threats and assist the city of Rome in its growth. You could not, as a Roman, depend solely on Fortuna to help you achieve your goals, but it did help to have her favor. Most importantly, Fortuna is tied to Rome's power. She ensures the power of Rome's expanding empire and the power of the world dominion. And the Romans got to be the kind of Romans they wanted to be, successful with Fortuna on their side. If you tie fortune to an individual, you can guarantee success. The concept of connecting Fortuna to a particular military victory also meant Fortuna was associated with a particular individual and their success. Fortuna also guards individuals in the liminal stages of life. The role that Fortuna will play in Supernatural will highlight the idea that Sam and Dean can be the kind of Americans they wanna be, victorious, powerful, modern day heroes with fortune on their side. The Winchesters first encounter Fortuna when their luck runs out. In the episode before they meet her, titled The Hero's Journey, the brothers' fraudulent credit cards have mysteriously stopped working, Dean suddenly gets a toothache, Sam ruins dinner and is getting sick and the Chevy Impala breaks down, forcing the brothers to walk to their next destination. Dean speculates that they have been cursed. After talking over their misfortunes with a friend, Garth, and telling them that they think they have pissed off God, Garth tells them that heroes never sweat the small stuff. In other words, as Garth tells them, Batman never has to change a flat tire and Superman never has to worry about how he's going to pay his water bill. 
But Garth concludes that as the heroes in the story, Chuck or God is writing for them. They have never had to deal with the more at ordinary aspects of life, like cavities, parking tickets, or rejected credit cards. And now they are experiencing how normal people live. Garth tells them to head to Alaska, to a place he has heard about where they can get their luck restored. But he warns them, there's always a catch. Fortuna appears in the individual in the episode, The Gamblers. Like her ancient Roman counterpart, she is tied to individuals and their success. And she is fickle and like Forrest Fortuna, she can be found in a rural area. But she functions in a way that is a little bit different from antiquity in the rules of mythology according to Supernatural. In 2020 Alaska, she is running a pool hall where she grants good luck to winners of the game and takes away the luck of those who lose their game of pool. Sam and Dean arrive at the pool hall incredulous that they will be able to supercharge their luck because they have never heard of this place. But when they stop at a diner for coffee and pie, they learn from a waitress that there is an urban legend about a magic pool hall in the middle of nowhere where if you can get up there and win, you come back lucky, as in hit the Powerball lucky. But they are warned that no one has ever achieved this. When Sam and Dean arrive, they are shown a coin that can detect their luck. It shows Dean's level is average. He must play to win, or if he keeps losing, leave when the coin shows he is out of luck. Fortuna challenges him to a game. While Dean and Fortuna play, Sam learns that many people in the bar end up on winning streaks, but fail to walk away while winning, thus sealing their fate as losers. Dean wins his game with Fortuna, plays another man at the bar and wins, and when he does, he sees the man's remaining luck drain out of his coin and onto Dean's. Sam and Dean follow the man out of the bar only to see his health quickly deteriorate. The brothers figure out that they have drained the man's luck away. Sam talks to the bartender and a patron and realizes they are all trapped in the bar. Then he looks at Dean's coin and realizes it's inscribed with Atrox Fortuna and a woman's profile. Sam explains to Dean that this is the Roman goddess of luck. Sam and Dean inform Fortuna that they realize she is skimming luck off the top of people's wins and threaten to kill her son Pax if she does not return to Dean the rest of the luck that he won. Dean challenges Fortuna to another game, but she insists that Sam play her instead. Sam tells her he will only play if he can, he can pay, play for the lives of everyone in the bar as he wishes to set them free with their luck restored. Fortuna declines his offer and says, he can only play for his luck, and if he loses, both he and Dean will die. Fortunus tells Sam and Dean, God created the world, but you know who created us gods? You did, you humans, sort of. She explains to Sam and Dean that she remembers when God created her and the other pagan gods to take the blame when things went wrong and because the pagan gods made epic stories. She's still holding a grudge against Chuck. She explains that she holds a grudge for the fact that Chuck created her, but she has to survive on the periphery out in the Alaskan wilderness because no one worships the pagan gods anymore. Sam wins one final round against Fortuna after she asks him why he wants to play to restore the luck of others rather than obtain hero's luck. Because they matter to me, replies Sam, and Dean chimes in, they matter to us. Sam loses the final game against Fortuna, but she releases everyone in the bar in spite of this and does not kill Sam and Dean. Although Fortuna first appears as an adversary to the Winchesters, when Sam and Dean explain that they have been cursed by God and that they need luck, she ends up helping them because their actions during the episode demonstrate that true heroes are not extinct as she had previously thought. Fortuna thinks that they do resemble the heroes from the old days. The Winchesters leave the pool hall with a luck restoring coin that counteracts God's curse in them and the advice, don't play his, meaning Chuck's game, make him play yours. This will allow them to succeed in preventing God from taking over the world. Fortuna's appearance on coinage in ancient Rome connotes the benefits of empire. When the Winchesters receive Fortuna's coin, it is an endorsement of their mission to uphold American exceptionalism. But in antiquity, like in the supernatural show, fortune can also cause misfortune to individuals. Thus, Fortuna can help the Winchesters el eliminate Chuck as a threat. The unofficial song of supernatural, Kansas's Carry On, states in the lyrics, Carry on, my wayward son, there'll be peace when you are done, implying that Sam and Dean must finish their mission before they would ever have a chance at a normal life. And at the end of the series, Sam and Dean defeat Chuck with the help of Fortuna. Unlike the other figures from Greco-Roman Greco myth that they encounter throughout the series, she supports the brother's mission. And the threat to America and the American way of life has been inside its borders all along. There is a sense throughout Supernatural that everyone has a role to play, 
and that some power is pulling the strings in everyone's lives, reinforcing the idea that Sam and Dean must make sacrifices to make their, meet their obligation to save others. In the end, Sam does pursue the American dream lifestyle, the house, the kid, and presumably the nine to five job. But in a way, the show is subverting the promise of the American de dream. As a demon hunter, Dean is doing all the things he would do if he were retired, drive on the open road and eat at diners. Sam gets the American dream, but he cannot share it with his brother, who dies at the series end. And in the montage at the series end, the audience sees that something is always missing from Sam's life until he and his brother are reunited. They fulfill their mission and save America, but they pay a high price. Fickle fortune does not give them hero's luck. Thank you for listening to my paper, and I hope to see you at the conference.